How much are you looking forward to going up again? Next time you guys be out here against the Bucks and a couple of joint practices, how much are you looking forward to that? How much can you help? How much can that help you? Yeah, it's the spirit of competition. Um, we do a great job around this building and highly competitive, competitive, uh, highly intrinsically motivated people. So, I mean, if you want to be good, you got to go against uh, good defenses. They have a good defense. So, I'm looking forward to the challenges, both at the line of scrimmage and the back end, uh, to work my craft and get better. How competitive do joint practices typically feel? I mean, does it, does it get close to a game at times, you think? I think at this level we're all professionals. Uh, we, we know how to practice, like you know, run across the middle, no blow up shots, and turn. You know the obvious ones everyone at home knows: no cut blocks, you know, none of the extra BS. But to answer your question, it's very competitive, and it should be. Um, that's that's why that's why the league does it. That's why uh, a lot of places do it because it is competitive, and uh, it's fun to go against someone uh, different. You go against the same dude every day. Starts knowing your tells a little too much, so it, it's good to get that feedback from fresh matchups to uh, to see what you need to fine tune, see what you need to add in your tool belt. You talked since you've been here about building chemistry with Ryan. I mean, you, you, where does that show up on the practice field now, as far as you've been to anticipate what you're doing? Maybe you get a good feel for what he's doing out there. Yeah, same answer. It's like any other relationship. Uh, trust is just repetition over time, and I've been fortunate enough to be around here. Uh, was this practice 15 or something like that? So having spring and these practices to just keep accruing reps with the quarterback, just like every other pass catcher on our roster, the more opportunities you get, uh, the more comfortable both sides will feel when it uh, comes to the real deal. How are you, Mike? Did the baby powder wash out okay? It did. Yeah, it did. Gave me a good idea what I'm going to look like when I'm old. Uh, on a serious point, uh, the these joint practices starting Wednesday and again next week, that maybe help finalize your decisions uh, for the right tackle spot with the competition that's going on there? Um, I mean, I think it's just another step in the, in the direction to come up with a decision. I don't think that there's been any timetable. I think going against some, some other players is going to be really good for all of us, uh, especially uh, the offensive and defensive linemen. You know, DBs covering new receivers and receivers you know, trying to get open against, um, you know, DBs. It's a great scheme that we're going against on both sides. So it's a big, great, great work for us. Some stuff really wasn't working there for a while, and then uh, DBs were breaking up a, a ton of passes. What would you think of what the offense wasn't getting done and what the defense was getting done? Well, I mean, those are 50-50 balls, and we've come down with some of those in, earlier in camp. And, you know, today that, you know, the defense was able to, to, to make plays down the field on those, you know, contested catches that um, – you know, that, that we got to try to come down with. You know, maybe we have to go up and, you know, try to stay under control and, and, and be able to go high point that football and, and come down with it. When deciding the, these joint practices and which team, what goes into that from your perspective? Are you, are you, is there something in particular you want in the matchup? Is that just kind of who you're talking to anyway? Or? Well, I, I think it starts with, you know, a lot of it is scheduling. You know, I think it starts um, with scheduling, like, you know, you have to be uh, home or you have to be on the road the first week and, you know, somebody else has to be, you know, on the road. So then you, you cancel that week off and you try to figure out, okay, who who needs to travel the second week when we're at home and then, you know, have a great relationship with those guys and worked well uh, in the past. So, you know, you make, make some calls and some teams are available for it, some teams aren't. Um, and then you try to come up with a working relationship. You send them a script. You know, they try to add if you – you know, hey, let's think about this, and you kind of work with them, and you know, try to make sure everybody gets good work in. Caleb was around the ball a lot today. Where have you seen him make strides? Well, I mean, he's been out there every single day, and then when you get, when you're out there every single day, you have a tendency, and you work hard, uh, and you and you focus in the meetings. You have a you know tendency to improve, and I think that that's that's what we're seeing, and it, that needs to translate uh, here in this next couple practices with Tampa, and then you know, into the game setting and, and keep going. So that's what happens when you can string some days together, practice days, and uh, you know, come out and use the techniques that, that we're teaching. Finish. Julio, how much do you look forward to seeing Caleb against, you know, big stature receivers like, like that? Well, just new receivers, you know what I mean? Just just new receivers, and, and they obviously have um, big receivers. I mean, we, we have guys, give some guys that, you know, are good size as well. So it's just a different body, different play type, play style. 
and uh, you know I think it'll be a great challenge for us. You brought back Kalu right before the start of camp. What uh, what about him do you like that you thought you needed again on this team right now? Well, I mean it's been a thin position for us. Um, you know this you know, it's a guy we've had history with that, that we've um, worked with, and then you know he came back and you know, was able to do some things on defense, played a couple different positions. Uh, he's got a energy to him. You know, he, he, he loves ball. He's out here. You can, you know, you notice when he's out. Um, yeah, and he's got some length and, you know, he played physical in the first game. So, you know, he'll continue to, to get some opportunities there. Any noticeable differences from his year away when he came back? Any, was he better in any way? I mean, I don't think any noticeable difference. You know, I mean, I'm not sure what he did or didn't do in New York, but, you know, he came in as, you know, he's been working primarily at safety for us. Mike, since the preseason opener, how do you feel like Malik has kind of maybe taken the, the coaching points and, and tried to apply it, like just in terms of making corrections and, and progressing? I mean, I think he's very, you know, aware of the things that we're asking him to do and, and looking for those opportunities to improve. And, um, you know, had one of those today and he threw it. And, you know, I think it was a contested catch drop that, you know, we weren't able to come down with. But, you know, you have to be willing to, to do those things and practice and push it and, and see it and work it in individual and then have it translate over to team. So I think he's, you know, very conscious. We, we, we want Malik to, you know, to be as athletic and, and, as, and make as many plays as he possibly can. Um, but then, you know, understand when things are there and timing and rhythm um, that it's a great opportunity to take advantage of, of those spaces and that timing. And then, um, you know, whatever happens after that, if it's not there, you know, then then he has to go and, and be an athlete and, and be, you know, a playmaker. Who was joking this morning that in some drills where his guys can get their hands on him, um, he thinks they, they take some vengeance and enjoy getting a shot at him when they can. You do a lot of that stuff with yeah. guys, you feel that? Um, yeah. I mean, I'd like him to, to try to do that with the against the defender uh, or the guy across from him more than the coach. But uh, if that gets him going, you know, I'm available. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I have to watch the tape from the day, but you know, I, you know, I'm hoping that there's some consistency that he's continuing to build. Has he shown? Did he show that before? Yeah, that was something that he, you know, just kind of daily things, and you know, some different, you know, maybe working inside versus outside, or as we started to add some more calls onto his plate, um, there were things that we had to coach up. But you know, he, he's somebody that you only have to usually tell things to once. Finishing plays, you know, whether it's in a, a practice or a game, something that's learned uh, as a rookie too? Uh, I mean, I hope so. You know, I mean, we have to try to finish longer than the guy with the ball on offense. And, you know, we're trying to play full tilt to the tackle on defense. Um, I don't think it's natural for, for a wide receiver or a tight end that doesn't catch the football to, to turn immediately, turn up field and uh, try to find uh, somebody to block or somebody to high screen. I don't think that that's... That's natural. So uh, hopefully we, we can try to continue to, to coach it. Mike, what have you liked about Rashad as he works back from the injury for the last year? Um, you know, he plays, he plays extremely hard. He, he is relentless. Um, that, that's probably the, the thing that I would say is his biggest redeeming quality. And that, that is a great quality. I mean, he keeps coming, takes a million reps, competes, uh, has gotten better. And uh, but but his effort certainly um, stands out. You know that that's that's the thing that when you talk about Rashad, it's you know he he's going to go and he's going to keep coming at you. And however many times you put him in there, you know he'll go out there and, and go as hard as he can. When it comes to, to pass blocking for tackles, what are the, you know maybe one or two of the things, whether it's Dylan or anybody else, that absolutely have to take place when you aside from allowing a quarterback to be sacked. Yeah, uh, stay inside, block your man. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to go through a dissertation sure. on how, how I want to coach offensive tackles. That's, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Stay inside out, block your man.